Hi, in this video we're going to look at a hypothesis test for two means. In this test we're going to take sample means from two different populations to determine if they're significantly different or if they're roughly the same. Let's take a look. So if we're going to perform a hypothesis test for two means, uh, the first thing to keep in mind is we want to make sure we're using two simple random samples that are taken independently. Okay, and what I mean by independently is the, the individuals in each of the two samples uh, should have no relation uh, to one another. They should be taken from distinct populations. Uh, they should not be the same person in, e in both samples. We should not have brother and sister, husband and wife, anything like that. So the individuals in each of the two samples should be uh, completely independent from one another. Similar to uh, the previous hypothesis test, whenever we're working with means, uh, we want to have sample sizes of at least 30 or the samples need to be taken from populations that we know uh, to be normally distributed. Uh, if we do know the populations are normally distributed, we do not need to use samples uh, larger than 30. Uh, but if we don't know much about the populations, then we should use 30 or higher uh, to play it safe. Uh, the test statistic we're going to use here, again, it depends on uh, what standard deviations we're privy to. If we know the standard deviations from each of the two populations, uh, then we would use the z-statistic. Uh, again, that's going to be pretty rare. Uh, this situation isn't going to come up too much. Okay. The more typical situation is that we only have standard deviations for our samples. Uh, in which case we're going to use the t-statistic. So uh, most of the time we're going to use the t-statistic. Uh, again, the formulas look somewhat complicated, but our calculator is going to compute the test statistic for us, so uh, you don't need to remember those. Let's see how this works. Here's an example. A mathematics professor claims that male students have a higher aptitude for mathematics than do females. A random sample of 48 male students took a mathematics aptitude exam and had a mean score of 72 with a standard deviation of 8.4. A random sample of 52 female students took the same exam and had a mean score of 69.5 with a standard deviation of 10.1. Test the professor's claim at the 0.05 level of significance. Uh, so let's start with our hypotheses. Uh, your null hypothesis is going to be that the two means are the same. So we could state that uh, the mean score for males equals the mean score for females. Uh, an alternative way we could uh, assign a null hypothesis would be to say that the difference between the two means is zero. So you'll sometimes see it written this way, but uh, these two statements are equivalent. The alternate hypothesis would be what the professor is suggesting, that the mean score for males uh, should be greater than the mean score for females. Or alternatively, we could say that the mean score for males minus the mean score for females is greater than zero. Okay, So we can state these either way. Uh, we're going to be doing a right-tailed test for this one. Uh, you want to check your conditions real quick. Are our samples large enough? Uh, the male sample is 48. The sample from the female population is 52. Those are both 30. So we're, um, typically test scores like this are normally distributed, so we probably don't need, uh, samples this large, but we have them anyway, so we will use them. Okay. Um, in terms of standard deviations, we only have standard deviations from our two samples, so our test statistic is going to be the T statistic. Okay, so on our calculator we're going to go to stat. We're going to go over to tests and for this one we want to use the two sample T test. So that's choice number four. Uh, again on some of these you might be using the two sample Z test uh, but most likely you're going to be doing a T test for this one. So go ahead and choose uh, test number four, two sample t-test. I'm going to input the stats. First it asks us for the mean from the first sample. So that would be the mean score for males, which was 72. And then it wants the standard deviation from that sample, which was 8.4. 
and then it wants the sample size from that sample which was 48 okay so for my male sample the mean score was 72 the standard deviation was 8.4 and the sample size was 48 then I enter the same three uh, numbers for the female sample starting with the mean which was 69.5 the standard deviation was 10.1 and the sample size was 52 then we choose whether we're doing the two-tailed left-tailed or right-tailed test in this case we are doing the right-tailed test so that would be the third option pooled you always want this to say no for this test and then I'm going to calculate so the T statistic we are given is 1.35 approximately and the P value here is 0 0.09 okay we compare our p-value to alpha in this case my p-value is greater than alpha alpha was 0 0.05 which means we are not going to reject the null okay and since we do not reject the null that means we did not find sufficient evidence to support the math professor's claim that males have a higher aptitude than females uh, you know our sample score for females was slightly lower than that for males uh, what our test tells us was that it was not significantly statistically significantly lower uh, the lower score was more likely just due to random chance in the random samples I came up with so the appropriate conclusion would be that there is not sufficient evidence to support the math professors claim so there's my conclusion okay so let's try one more example so we're going to try to answer the question is store brand cereal just as good as the name brand cereal okay so you know when you grocery shop if you eat a lot of cereal like I do uh, sometimes that store brand cereal right next to the good stuff is tempting because it's a lot cheaper uh, but you know sometimes it doesn't seem as good so we're going to do a statistical test to see whether or not they're the same or whether uh, there's actually a difference between these two so we're gonna focus on uh, marshmallow cereals and we have a random sample of 50 boxes of the store brand marshmallow cereal and we computed the mean number of marshmallows in the box and the standard deviation okay then we took a random sample of 50 boxes of the name brand marshmallow cereal and we computed the mean number of marshmallows and the standard deviation and all boxes were the same size they were all 16 ounce boxes so at the 0 0.01 level significance test whether or not the two brands of cereal are the same so my null hypothesis is going to be that the the two means are the same so we can just say the mean from group a is the same as the mean from group b again or we could write that as the difference is zero the difference between the two means is zero our alternate hypothesis here is that they're different okay the question is simply you know are these the same or are they different uh, we don't really have any reason to use greater than or less than here we're just trying to see if they're the same or not so this would be an example where we would use a two-tailed test um, again then the other way we could write this is that the difference is not zero okay so those are our hypotheses um, again check to see if we've met the conditions uh, both of these samples they're independent samples because they're taken from two different populations um, and they're both size 50 uh, so we're plenty good in terms of sample size okay um, just like in the previous example and in most examples we only have standard deviations from the samples we do not know the population standard deviation so again uh, we're going to compute the t-statistic and we're going to use the two sample t-test so again I'm going to go to stat tests two sample t-test just like before and we're going to enter the data from this problem so start with the first sample which was the store brand cereal we want the mean number of marshmallows which is 196 the standard deviation for the number of marshmallows was 15.4 and the sample size was 50 and then I enter the same three numbers for 
the store brand serial, starting with the mean, which was 218, the standard deviation was 6.4, and the sample size was 50. Here we are doing a two-tailed test, so I want to choose the first of the three options on uh, the last, second to last line. Uh, pooled, we want no, and then we're going to calculate. Okay, so we get a T statistic of negative 9.328. We have a P value, which is very small. It's 1.236 times 10 to the negative 13th power. So that would be this number right here, which is definitely less than alpha. Okay, so we have a very small p-value here, which means the sample data we collected is very unlikely to have occurred if the null hypothesis is true. Okay, so this means the null hypothesis is likely not true. So we should reject the null hypothesis. Okay, it turns out that these two samples are significantly different. So we can reject the idea that they are the same. So we have sufficient evidence to conclude uh, that the two brands of cereal are significantly different. So there's my conclusion. Uh, there's sufficient evidence that the two brands of cereal are different, uh, at least in terms of marshmallows per box. There could be other differences like uh, crunchiness uh, or flavor of the portion of the cereal that's not marshmallows, etc. But in terms of how many marshmallows are in the box, uh, we did find a significant difference here. Okay, so this is how we conduct a hypothesis test to see if two independent samples have different means or if they're pretty much the same.